the truck is up in the air, but we got our diff, all of our parts for our diff delivery all came in one day. It's pretty awesome. It was like Christmas for differentials. So it's diff day today. We went out for a drive, well, last week. I gave it some throttle and uh, went back later and I saw one single burnout mark. It's unacceptable. So it's time to turn this differential into a solid diff and get some better gearing. So today we're gonna to be tearing apart the diff to get measurements for our pinning insulation tool. Our pinion depth, instead of going out and buying ourselves a tool we're gonna to make one at the machine shop. So uh, let's turn into this diff today, get some measurements and get started. All right, here's the diff all torn apart. She's open. Oh no, that's not good right there. No traction. Um, we also noticed when we took off the cover on the diff, we had a broken bolt right up top here. It actually was broken, somehow broken already. Not when I took it off. So that's not good. So first we're gonna check our measurements real quick and then I'll probably start turning in this bad boy a little bit. Don't figure out the size yet? Dude, you're supposed to be the tool guy. All right, so we got the ring, the diff, everything out of the back of the truck, and we counted up our ring and opinion gears, and guess what? There was three 7.3s in this truck already. I have no clue where my brain was, where I thought that we had four 10s in here the whole entire time. So guess what? Now we have to order different gears. Instead of the three 7.3s we were planning on getting, we now have to look at doing something else, like a 3.25 or a 3.5, something different. So hey, that's fun. The truck is up in the air, but we got our diff, all of our parts for our diff delivery all came in one day. It's pretty awesome. It was like Christmas for differentials. We'll start off with, not here, down here. We'll start off here. We got our Beltec shocks for the rear. We have Beltecs on the front and they're amazing. We love them. So this will help when the truck tries to squat, put those bad boys on. Right here, we got two drive shaft loops for us. We had the U-joint snap on us a while back and it scared the crap out of me. And I don't want to do that again because the drive shaft was slapping around on the ground and it was pretty entertaining. So we got two drive shaft loops because obviously you no, know, there's two drive shafts that connect in the middle with the carrier bearing. It might be a different name for that. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, but anyway, so we got two drive shaft loops. And then we got a uh, so Yukon bearing set. This one uses the Timken bearings, which uh, comes in the truck originally. So we're going with the same manufacturer that made the original bearing. So this is a fantastic bearing set for us. Uh, so this will work great when we go to put our carrier in and uh, for our pinion, great bearing set. And moving over to our 342 gears. Yes, I said 342. Previously been saying we're gonna do 373, but you know, we had a big brain fart. I mean, we thought the truck had four tens in it originally, but when we pulled everything apart, uh, we realized it actually had three seven threes already in there. So you know what? That wasn't gonna work. So we had to go 342s trying to get more top end for the quarter mile run, because right now we're running out of uh, running out of engine at the end, running out of RPMs. So we went with 342 Richmond gears. Um, 
there they are right here. I mean, they're ring and pinion gear. Nothing exciting to look at. They look like ring and pinions, but super strong uh, Richmond gears there. And then the amazing picture on the front says Detroit Locker, but it's actually just Eaton Posse. Let's open this bad boy up. Most exciting part. And once again, just looks like a diff. But well, that is pretty awesome. Let's see if I can lift it out of here. I know they're super heavy. I can tell by the box. Oh, yeah, there we go. Woof, that's exciting. Got our posi right there. And um, we also got um, upgraded clutches inside. So if we will, right now we're just going to go with the stock clutches inside to see how the truck does with it. But we do have some upgraded clutches for inside this if we want to do full race on the bad boy. And then in here is a Yukon yoke because we snapped a u-joint and i feel like i'm gonna snap a yoke so we upgraded yokes to a nice cast steel as well with the stock ones cast as well but it's 43 years old this one should be a big improvement for us so with that all said we are almost to install time on all this stuff we're gonna pull the diff off the whole axle assembly actually we're gonna clean it up paint it and uh as you can see we already dropped everything and we're gonna take it out clean it up and it'll be easier for us to do the install on it. The tool is made. This is our ring and pinion installation tool. You need to check the pinion depth when doing a, a ring and pinion change. And instead of going out and buying a tool, my coworker and my friend David, genius, genius fabricator uh, in the machining world, said, you know what, let's go out and build one. So uh, we made one. This looks like such a simple little item, but you know what? You want to be super precise when you're installing your ring and pinion, and getting your pinion depth. And this bad boy has been machined so perfectly that it has a one thou tolerance, one thousandth of an inch tolerance from side to side. So this is going to help out amazingly for doing our install. You can get them online for like a hundred bucks or so, but they're made of aluminum and they're cheap and they're, you know, trash so uh this is amazing so this is going to help us out big time big thanks to david for uh, um helping make this actually not helping he did all the dang work um kick butt with it so big thanks for that and we look forward to using this for install and uh yeah hopefully we'll work some of the other projects we're gonna have as well and the axle assembly is out of the truck so we have it out we're gonna clean it all up and get it prepped for doing the brand new install of all the parts and for the paintwork what we got is a wonderful Harbor Freight seal puller, which already broke on us because it's made of such quality material. So we're going back to the American made way, taking the seals off. So, our bearing puller goes in, turn it flat so it grabs the back of the bearing, push this into the bearing, tighten this all the way in so it's nice and snug, and we have a two and a half pound slide hammer here that is going to be doing the brunt of our work. So once we bring this in, this washer shouldn't be doing much work besides holding this in place. And now, take our slide hammer. And moving the bearings on a 12 bolt Chevy. We got the new races inside on both sides. We just are using the fancy dancy toaster oven over here to heat up some bearings. We are working on installing the bearings onto the differential right now. Fancy dancy way of doing it. We heated them up and then put them on and they didn't get all the way on so we're trying to get them the rest of the way on. 
After that, we are moving on to our opinion depth and I'll give you some more videos showing that being put together. All right, as you saw, I was blending out the center of this bearing here. This is our dummy bearing. We picked up an extra bearing to uh, use it as our mock-up bearing. So I blended out the inside to allow this to freely slide onto this pinion. The top bearing uh, is not pressed on, so we don't have to worry about blending it off too much. So as you can see, I can shim this and drop this bearing on. Now that it has been nicely shaved on the inside, now we can use this to do our mock-up. All right, so we have got our pinion in there, pinion depth gauge as well, uh, the one that was mocked up, and uh, we got a number of 2.857, and we're not that far off from what we need to be. We need to be at 2.853, for at least for our ring and pinion. Every ring and pinion is different, so you gotta check the markings on the front of your ring and pinion to know your depth. So we're gonna have to shim this one a little bit more than we already have, and once we do that, we can pull this pinion back out again, and we can put the bearings on there that we didn't shave down for easy install. You don't ever wanna use those with your finished product. Um, we're gonna heat up the new bearings and throw those on there, and then we can move on to the rest of the install. We double take the five hours, we do All right, this is the last, last there chance. There was a lot of math involved right. in that. A lot of math involved. Yeah. All right, are we Double ready? Boom. Boom. You heard the click? Boom. That's how you put a bearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's stressful. <laughs> we are moving on to the super fun part. The part where muscles and strength are a part of us. All right, so we've got the pinion in there with our crush sleeve. We already have the bearing put on there, the correct bearing with our shims. We know our pinion depth is perfect. So we've got the crush sleeve on there. We have put in our new seal already. I forgot I was gonna show you guys that. But then again, this isn't a how-to video. This is kind of just me doing it. So right now we've already got the crush sleeve crushed quite a bit and about five inch pounds worth of torque on the bearings right now. So we just have to do a little bit more torquing and uh, we're almost done with this step. All right, so Joy's is gets to come apart again. As you guys saw us torquing that down there for a second, we went from five to eight inch pounds to 80 inch pounds within a few uh, cranks. Also known as we overdid it. So it took us 20 hard cranks after there was no play in the bearings anymore to get from zero to five and then only three extra cranks uh not full revolutions just like three of those uh to go from uh to go from 10 to 80 so that was fun so we're gonna pull this all back again and put a new crush leave in it and do it all over again all right so uh our breaker bar um our breaker bar slipped out of out of the yoke holder and whacked me in the shin. Uh, so we're uh, we're safetying up to make sure it doesn't happen again. That and its homeowners insurance probably doesn't cover this. So we killed another tool. <sighs> so where the breaker bar connects to the yoke holder, we ripped both of them out. So the tool's pretty much useless. Uh, we bent the tool as well on top of that. So we're gonna have to order um, another tool from a different company and hopefully that'll get here soon so we can get part two out of the video. But um, thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for the next one.